In this video, we'll look at how to treat an indolent corneal ulcer with the diamond burr procedure. You'll start off by um, adequately cleaning um, the eye with a diluted pevidine iodine solution, approximately one in 50 um, there. Um, cleaning both on the, the corneal surface and um, briefly in the surrounding tissues. And then using a rotating diamond burr tip um, on a battery operated um, handheld device um, that will gently lift up the epithelial surface on these indolent ulcers. Um, you apply the um, pressure across the entire corneal surface. This can be done um, just either purely under local anaesthetic or with a little local anaesthetic topically um, and a light to moderate sedation. I tend to prefer doing mine with sedation because I find it a little bit easier to ensure that I've um, actually got across the, the whole of the corneal surface, but there is individual clinician um, preference here. Um, the key to these procedures is not actually the complexity of the procedure, but truly feeling confident in making your diagnosis um, of a superficial chronic corneal epithelial defect. Um, by definition, these need to be superficial ulcers. Um, if you can see any sort of um, indent there um, or any sign of a, a deeper stromal ulcer, these should be considered a, as infected ulcers um, and um, this procedure is unlikely to be the, the most appropriate one and probably not indicated. Um, with these ulcers, you'll find that they are superficial, tend to be irregular in outline and um, will often have a halo effect where um, the epithelium is not sticking to the underneath um, stromal layer. Um, and so once you have identified these cases, um, then you can look at um, doing the diamond burr. Here in this video, I now show um, you that after performing the diamond burr, I re-examine with the slit lamp to see the extent of um, where I've performed that procedure. Um, and if necessary, um, just go over a little bit of a, of a wider area with my diamond burr. Following treatment, my patients will go home on topical antibiotics such as um, chloramphenicol, lubrication and um, some anti-melt medication such as serum or acetylcysteine, as well as um, often placing a contact lens um, on the corneal surface. The study's shown that there is um, improved results when they have a co contact lens put in place um, and providing adequate pain relief. So something such as meloxicam um, and maybe a drop of atropine topically as well. Um, one additional thing that you can do um, in these patients is place a temporary tar tarsorophy. Um, so just closing and reducing the size of the eyelid margin, that will depend on the, the patient there. Um, do be aware and being very, very careful in um, considering this, particularly if you're or considering a diamond burr procedure in any brachycephalic um, patient. Those ones are much, much more prone to um, getting deeper ulcers develop and complications. So those owners need to be um, counseled very carefully about that before considering these procedures. Um, these are meant to be... Um, are thought to be an age-related condition. So um, older patients are more prone to, to getting this, um, as well as certain breeds such as um, boxers um, may be more affected. Um, so these stitches, they should just stay in um, for the first few days, probably about a week or so after um, the procedure has been done before um, removing them and the, the contact lens once healing's taken place. Um, a diamond burr procedure has a reasonably good success rate. Um, it's about 80 to 90 percent reported in the literature um, with some of them needing a, a second procedure and so having good client communication about um, both the, the risks and complications um, as well as the potential need for um, a 
second procedure um, is is worth having up front um, with them.